Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I am here with another Mismatch Monday. This Mismatch Monday is going to be different than some of the ones from the past, though. I got a, uh, well, I got a, a comment on one of my videos uh, where the person said that um, they liked my content. Uh, but they wish that I would do more games where it's one team from one year playing a team from a different year or a different era. And so that's what we're going to have today. We're not going to have two teams playing each other from the same season. We are going to have two teams playing each other from vastly different seasons. And so what we are going to have for you today is we are going to take the uh, 1991 World Champion Minnesota Twins, and they will take on the 1969 uh, last place in the AL West Seattle Pilots. And uh, this game will be in six stadium. In six stadium, a single for a lefty is a one to five, a ballpark single, and a ballpark single for a righty is a one to ten. And for both righties and lefties, a home run is a 1-17. to And so we will be doing that. Um, the, um, uh, the pitcher for the uh, Seattle Pilots today will be Gene Braybender. And Gene Braybender in 1969 was 13-14 with a 436 earned run average. He pitched 202 innings and allowed 193 hits and 26 home runs. The lineup that he will be facing for the Minnesota Twins, and I will go over the Pilots lineup when they come up to bat, is uh, Dan Glenn will be leading off and playing left field. Kirby Union Gap Puckett will be playing center field and batting second. Then it'll be Shane Mack, the right fielder, in the third spot. Batting in the cleanup spot will be Kent Herbeck, the first baseman. Then Chili Davis will be the DH and batting fifth. Uh, Brian Harper will be the uh, catcher and batting sixth. Chuck Knobloch will bat seventh. He's the second baseman. Mike Pagliarulo will be the third baseman in the eighth spot. And batting ninth will be Greg Gan Gag Gagne Gagne Gagne. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, really. Uh, and he'll be the shortstop. And like I said, they're they're facing Gene Brabender. So let's get on with this. Dan Gladden is the first batter, and he gets a three eight. Brabender is a righty, and Gladden is a right-handed batter, and that's going to be a pop out. Uh, that is a pop out to third base. So we will say pop out five. And Kirby, Union Gap, Puckett is up with one down. He gets a 6-7. He is a righty, and that is going to be a walk. So Puckett gets a board. And that is a walk allowed by Braybender. And up steps Shane Mack. He gets a 5-7. And that will be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for Seattle is a 2E17. So, or wait a minute, wait a minute, nope. Oh, he's a 2E29. So uh, that is a 20. That's a 20 and a 2. That might actually be a double play. And it is. So they, uh, a Mac hits into a DP and no runs come in for the Twins. That will take us to the Seattle Pilots and their lineup. They will be leading off with uh, Tommy Harper, and he will be the DH. Then Steve Hubley will be in center field, batting second. Mike Hegan will be in right field, batting third. Don Mincher is playing first base today, and he'll bat in the cleanup spot. Wayne Comer, the left fielder, will bat fifth. Jerry McNertney will be the catcher in the sixth spot. 
The third baseman will be John Donaldson, and he'll bat seventh. Gus Gill bats eighth and plays second base. And the main shortstop for these Seattle Pilots will be Ray Euler batting ninth. So we will lead off with Tommy Harper. He was a speedy guy. He gets a 6-7. And also, I want to point out, Kevin Tappany is pitching for the Twins. Tappany in 1991 was 16 and 9 with a 299 earned run average and allowed 225 hits and 23 home runs in 244 innings. So that is a 6 7, and that is uh, going to be a ground ball second base out. So Harper goes 4 to 3. The speedy Harper is out. That brings up Steve Hubley. Hubley gets a 5-7. That's going to be a strikeout. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's still a strikeout. So that is a strikeout for Tappany, his first of the game. And with two down, very quickly, you've got Mike Hegan, the batter. 4-8. He's a lefty, and that is a fly ball center field. So that is an F-8, and... The Pilots get nothing in the first. We go to the top of the second inning in a scoreless game between the 1991 World Champion Twins and the very bad 1969 Seattle Pilots. Kent Herbeck, the first baseman, is up. He gets a 6-9, and that will be a strikeout. So... Herbeck strikes out. That is the first K of the game for Braybender. Braybender, actually not a very bad pitcher. Um, he There's a Chili Davis gets a 5-6. He is a switch hitter, so he will be batting left, and that will be a strikeout. So that's a second strikeout for Braybender. And Brian Harper comes up. And with two, two down, he gets a line out to third base. So they go quickly there. The Twins get nothing in the second. We go to the bottom of the second in a 0-0 game with uh, Don Mincher coming up for the Pilots. He gets a 5-7, and that is, as we have established, a strikeout. So Tappany gets a strikeout. Wayne Comer is up. He gets a 4-12. That is going to be a fly ball to the right fielder. The right fielder for the uh, Twins is a 1-E-10, and that is a 16. So let me check that out. Uh, 16, that is going to be a fly ball B. I could have probably figured that out, but anyway, it is a fly out to um, 9. Is that a fly out 9? I think, let's see, 412. Yeah. And that brings up McNertney. And he gets a 6 9. He is a righty. And that is going to be a pop-out to shortstop. Pop-out six. I like how this game is going. It's going a little smoother because we don't have a lot of X charts coming up. Chuck Knobloch is the batter, the second baseman for the Twins here in the top of the third of a scoreless game between the 91 Twins and the 69 Pilots. That is a 6-5, and that is going to be a double. So Knobloch... Hits a double down the left field line. And Braybender, that's the first hit Braybender has allowed. Brings up Paglia Rulo. He gets a 1-4. And that is going to be a ballpark single. And it's a 10. So uh, he is a left-handed batter. So that is not a single for him. It will be a line out to second base. And uh, the line out four, Gagne is up. Six, six for Gagne. And that is going to be a, well, that's going to be big. That's going to be a run. It's going to be a single double asterisk. And Gagne 
drives in Knobloch. It's uh, amazing that the uh, all the damage is being done by the bad hitters in the Twins lineup, but nevertheless, that is the case. There is one down with a man at first and Dan Gladden, the top of the order, up, and he gets a 1-6, and that is going to be a single to right field. So two runners are on. Gagne moves to second base. And... Uh, that is a that's another hit for Braybender that he allowed. And Puckett. Kirby Puckett is up. And he gets a 3-6, and that's going to be a single double asterisk and knock in another run. So now the twins are just they're unloading right now. Braybender gives up a fourth hit and a second run. And there's a man 90 feet away with only one out to Shane Mack up. And there's a 6-6, six, six, and that's going to be more trouble. Uh, that is going to be a single double asterisk and knock in yet another run. So Braybender is all of a sudden getting his ass handed to him. And uh, it's not pretty out there. Kent Herbeck is up. Runners at the corners again. 5-8. That is going to be a fly ball center field B. That will score the... Uh, um, that will... Oh, wait a minute. No, five, no, that's a strikeout. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong side. Uh, Herbeck is a left-handed batter, so that is a strikeout for Herbeck. And for uh, Braybender, which he needed badly. And uh, keeps uh, runners at the corners with Chili Davis up. And Chili Davis gets a 2-4, and that is, he would be batting, well, he's batting against the right, and that's a ground ball shortstop A. So um, he goes out 6-3, to three, but the Twins do get three runs in the third inning. We go to the bottom of the third with the 91 Twins, ahead of the 69 Pilots by the score of 3 nothing, with John Donaldson up. They haven't been able to break through on Tappany yet. Um, that's a 6-9, and that will be a pop-out to first base. In fact, Tappany himself has not given up um, a hit yet, and there's one down. And Gus Gill is the batter. He gets a 1-5, and that is going to be the first hit allowed. Um, the pilots get aboard, Gus Gill gets his first hit, and really the first hit allowed by Tappany, and Ray Euler is the batter. He gets a 2-7, that is going to be a fly ball to center field. So that is two outs. And up steps Terry Harper, or Tommy Harper. And he gets a 111, and that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he goes out six to three, and the uh, Pilots get no runs in the third. We go to the top of the fourth with the Twins ahead, three nothing, and batting. Bray Bender is still out there. Harper is up. He gets a four seven, and that will be a single. So Brian Harper gets a single. Here in the fourth, and Braybender gives up his sixth hit of the game already. Chuck Knobloch comes up. He gets a 3-8, and that is going to be a line out to second base. There's one down, and Mike Tagliarulo is up. He gets a 6-7. That is going to be a walk. So the the uh, uh, Twins have two men on again, and another threat brewing. There's only one out, and the runners at first and second, and Gagne is the batter. He gets a 5-7. That is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is Gus Gill, and he actually is not that bad. He's a 2-E-17. That's probably going to be an out. Um, and it is going to be a ground ball double play. So 
That is exactly what happens. The 4-6-3 double play and no runs come in for the Twins, although they did threaten there. But with a 3 nothing lead, one would have to think that the Twins have what they need to beat the 69 Pilots, but we will see. Steve Hubley is the batter, and he gets a line out to second base, one away. Line out four to lead off the Pilots fourth. One away, and Hegan is up, and he gets a 2-3, and that is going to be a single. So Hegan with a hit. That is a second hit allowed by Tappany. And Don Mincher is the batter. He gets a 4-7, and that's going to be a ground ball to second base. The second baseman for the Twins is a 3-E-21. That is a 20, so a 20 and a 3, and that is going to be a double play, and the uh, Pilots are out of this inning with no runs. And we go to the top of the fifth with the 91 Twins leading the 69 Pilots by the score of 3 nothing, and Dan Gladden is up. He gets a single. So Dan Gladden gets a board, and I think that is, yes, his second hit of the game. Braybender gives up his seventh hit. Kirby Puckett is up. He gets a 2-7. That is going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. So the big DP gets it comes to Braybender's rescue again. Shane Mack is up. He gets a 5-2. And that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. That is going to be Ray Euler. And he is a, actually a pretty decent shortstop. He is a 2E29, and that is an 18, and that will be an out. So Mac goes 6-3. to three. And no runs come across in the fifth for the Twins. So far, they've just the Twins have just had that big inning where they got three runs. And uh, Tappany is completely shutting the pilots down. Wayne Comer comes up. He gets a 4-11. That's going to be a fly ball to left. The left fielder for the Twins is a 2-E-4. That is an 18, probably an out. That's my guess. And uh, yes, that is. It's a fly ball, one away. So, um, yeah. So Comer... Gets a fly out to seven. McNurtney is the batter, the catcher. And he gets a four five. He is a righty. That is a line out to, to third base. Line out five. And John Donaldson is up. And he gets a five six. And that is going to be a double. So John Donaldson gets the first extra base hit for the Pilots. Um, Tappany giving up his third hit of the game on that. Man at second with two down. Gus Gill up. And Gus Gill is going to get a single double asterisk and knock in a run. So they get one of the runs back. It's amazing. Tappany giving up his fourth hit and first run of the game. And Ray Euler is the batter. And he gets a 2-11. And that's going to be a strikeout. So Tappany striking out his third guy. One run comes across for the uh, Pilots, and they are in this game. It's only 3-1. to one. Kent Herbeck is the batter for the Twins. He gets a 1-8, and that's going to be a ground ball to first base. So that is a uh, ground out three, one away. And up steps Chili Davis. And Chili Davis is going to get a walk. Braybender walks his third man of the... He's allowed a s small traffic jam on, on the bases, but he has avoided serious trouble. 5-8 uh, for Brian Harper is going to be a fly ball to center two away. And Chuck Knobloch is the batter, the second baseman for the Twins. He gets a 5-5. That is a ground ball to short. 
that is going to be Euler, and he will make the play. So that goes, he go Knobloch goes six to three, and no runs come in for the Twins. And now the Pilots are up. They're down in this game, three to one, bottom of the sixth. Tommy Harper is up. He gets a 6-5, and uh, that is going to be a pop-out to first base. If they could get him on, if they could just get him on, he could maybe steal second. They could sacrifice and produce another run. They'll have to do something like that, I would think. But 4-2 uh, for Steve Hovley, that's going to be a ground ball to first base. And uh, Mike Hegan is the batter with two down really quickly here. And he gets a 3-7, and that is going to be a fly ball left field. We're going to the top of the seventh. It is 3-1. They're going to take out Braybender because they got a shot here. They don't want to. This is a close game, and... Ray Bender, like I said, he has allowed a lot of guys on base. So he's only going to pitch six innings. Yes, he's only going to do six innings. He allowed tw uh, seven hits, three walks, and three earned runs. And they are going to bring in to pitch. They're going to bring in Bob Locker. Bob Locker in 1969 was 5 and 6 with a 314 earned run average. He pitched 100 innings, allowed 95 hits and only 9 home runs. So he's going to be the new pitcher. He is a righty like Braybender was. Pagley Rulo is the first man that gets to greet him here in the 7th. He gets a 5-9 and that is going to be a ground ball second base, one away. He goes out four to three. Gagne is up. One away. He gets a one seven. That's going to be a fly ball center field. I'm telling you, the Twins are flirting with trouble here. They're down by only two. I mean, they're only up by two. And, uh, you know, I mean, it might take some work for the pilots to get that, but who knows? There's a five nine for Dan Gladden. And uh, that is going to be a fly ball center field. So Gladden flies out, and we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Bottom of the seventh, Don Mincher is up. Tappany is going to still be out there, at least for the seventh. He has pitched really well. 5-10, that is going to be a... That is a Ballpark single, but it's an out. So it's actually going to be a fly ball center field. Fly ball eight, and that brings Mincher to the plate. Or no, wait, Comer. That brings Comer to the plate. 412 for the righty. That's going to be a fly to right. The right fielder for the Twins is a 1E10. That is a 12. So let's see what that gets him. That's going to be on his card. So we're going to have to roll the E rating. It's a 2 on an E12. And that's going to be an E1. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. No, it's a... Uh, it's going to be an E1... On a one. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We roll a... Uh... Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so we'll roll one. Yep, and no, it's an out. It's a fly ball A. So, fly out, two away, and that brings to the plate McNerdney. And he gets a 5-8, and that's going to be a fly ball left. Fly out to 7. We go to the top of the 8th inning. The Twins only up by a scant 3-1 uh, uh, score here over the 69 Pilots. With Kirby Puckett up, 
Bob Locker's still out there. He gets a 2-9. That's going to be a strikeout. So Puckett goes down on K's. And let's write Locker in here. And he strikes out his first batter. One away. Shane Mack gets a 3-5. That is going to be a double. So Shane Mack rips a double down the line. That's the first hit Locker is allowed. It does put a man in scoring position for the Twins with her back up at the plate. He gets a 1-8, though. That's a ground ball first base. And he is out. And that's two down. And up steps Chili Davis. And Chili Davis gets a 110, which is a walk. So the Twins have two guys on. Potential uh, big inning here, possibly. Or really, one more run would be a big inning for them. Brian Harper is the batter. He gets a 4-4. That is going to be an out. So that's going to be a fly ball left field. So let's see. Fly out seven. No runs. Eighth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth. They are going to, the Twins are going to take Taffany out only because of, for like reality purposes. I mean, if I was managing a team and this was, uh, well, I am managing the team, but if I was playing competitively, I would keep Tappany out there. But to uh, play along with reality, we like to play along with reality here. We are going to take him out of the game, and we are going to uh, bring in Terry Leach. Terry Leach in 1991 was 1-2 with a 361 earned run average in 67 innings. And he will be uh, pitching to the um, the pilot's lineup, which will start off with John Donaldson here in the bottom of the eighth. So you got Donaldson coming up. Yeah. And he gets a 5-7. Leach is a righty, by the way. And uh, that is going to be a... That's going to be a single. So... Donaldson starts off with a base hit. And we'll write Leach in here. He allows a hit. Uh, Tappany went seven innings, allowed four hits, and only one earned run. So, I don't know. In real life, maybe he would have stayed out there. Gus Gill is up. He gets a 2-5. That is going to be a strikeout. So Gus Gill with the K. What Leach has in his favor, he doesn't. He wasn't that. He wasn't that great, especially for a reliever in '91. But what he has in his favor is he's going up against a bad lineup. Ray Euler gets a three-six, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop double play. So no runs come in for the Pilots. We go to the top in the ninth here. Uh, they're going to take Locker out. Locker went uh, two, and. Uh, Two really good innings. He didn't allow a run. They're going to bring in another reliever. And I want to point out, the, the Pilots have, I mean, they had some decent hitting, and so they do have some guys that can pinch hit in the ninth if they keep it this close. But for the moment, they need a relief pitcher, and they're going to uh, bring in, oh, you know what? I got the perfect guy. Yes, I do. Jim Bouton, Mr. Ball 4, the Ball 4 author. In uh, 1969, he was 2-1 with a 391 earned run average, and in 92 innings allowed only 77 hits. He will be the new pitcher. You knew you had to get Jim Bouton into this game. Chuck Knobloch is the batter here in the ninth of a game where the 91 Twins are beating the 69 uh, Pilots by only a score of 3-1. to one. And that is a 4-6, and that is going to be a walk. So Knobloch gets bored, Bouton walks him, that knuckleball um, not, um, not going where Bouton really planned for it to go. And so he has allowed a base runner here on the first guy he faces with Pagliarulo up, and he gets a 5-7. 
and that's going to be a strikeout. So Pagley Rulo strikes out. And up to the plate steps Greg Gagne. He gets a 3-6. That's going to be a ground ball third base double play. So this sets the stage right here. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's 3-1. The uh, pilots are within striking distance. They're, the Twins are going to look for another reliever. They're not real comfortable with Cher Terry Leach out there. They will bring in Carl Willis. Carl Willis in 1991 was uh, eight and three with a two two sixty three earned run average, and in in 80, 88 innings allowed seventy six hits. So he's going to be the new the new pitcher. He's going to come in try to close this down. They're going to let Tommy Harper bat. If he can get on, he can steal a base, like I mentioned. And he gets a 5-5, five, five, and that is going to be a strikeout. So Terry Harper strikes out. And Steve Hubley is the batter. Um, they're going to let him bat. He's got a good card against righties. And uh, he gets a 2-10, which is a ground ball first base C. So ground out three. And that brings up Mike Hegan. Mike Hegan is an on-base machine. Might not seem like at this game he only had one hit. He's one for three. But they're going to let him hit. He gets a 6-8. And that is going to be a fly ball to right field. And that is it. But this uh, the uh, the Pilots go on to lose this game by the score of 3-1. to one. But, I mean, it was, it, was, it was a lot closer than you might have thought. The 69... Pilots would make it against the 1991 world champion twins, but that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.